Hey guys, and welcome back to more Magic the Gathering lore. I'm Simon here again for the Ether Hub for the newest story straight out of Ixalan. I know we're all still clamoring to get our hands on some of these swashbuckling, large tooth, regal blood sucking cards, and we're just as excited to see where the story of this set is gonna take us. In terms of both lore and gameplay design, Ixalan looks to be a real treasure. You see what I did there? It's a pirate pun. God, this is going to be a long set. Anyway, saddle up the nearest dino, raid with some pirates, and grow a forest with some merfolk? However you decide to play Ixalan, don't forget about the story behind each and every one of these cards. A story we begin today with the first chapter. Jace alone. Me too, my mage. Me too. Jace Balarin, my mage, illusionist extraordinaire, planeswalker of the Gatewatch, aka Jace this League, living guild pack. Whatever title you choose to give him, Jace is a man of great skill and prowess. Yet, none of those fancy titles come to his aid in the last fight that ultimately sent him to the shores of Ixalan. A fight against the dragon planeswalker and all-around mean man Nicol Bolas. On the world of Amonkhet, Jace and the Gatewatch look to stop the insidious plans of Bolas without much of a plan themselves. While they managed to save some lives, Bolas won the day, claiming exactly what he wanted, a completely loyal, undead army of super champions. And, of course, the defeat of the Gatewatch with little effort. Jace's history with Bolas is deep and troubling, but on that day, he wasn't able to free himself of his past demon. He tasted, as he has so many times in the past, the bitter sting of failure and the crippling uncertainty of a memory wipe. Bolas has always been cruel, fighting his enemies in manners tailored specifically to maximize their personal torment. The dragon took what made Jace, Jace, his memories. Now flung to the world of Ixalan, the former Mind Mage is utterly lost, both figuratively and quite literally. He has no idea of himself or of his current situation. All he understands is that he'll need to survive, somehow. Look, this ain't the first time Jace has had his memories wiped. It's like an ongoing joke at this point. The Mind Mage losing his mind. But, this is the first time in the era of the Gatewatch that he and the others have seen defeat. Now, they're scattered across the multiverse and Jace doesn't even remember them. This is a great time in the story to examine Jace, the real Jace, without all the emotional baggage and restraints of his past stories. Before everything, at his very core, who is Jace Balarin? Well, we start to find answers to that all-important question as he struggles to survive on the beaches of Ixalan. It's funny that some of the first things that come to Jace is the instinct, the pull to planeswalk away. It seems planeswalkers have this innate tug they feel from the multiverse that beckons them to jump from world to world, as we see he doesn't remember being a planeswalker, but still tries to planeswalk anyway. Of course this doesn't work, the Citadel appears above him forcing his physical body to reform on the plane, so no matter how strong that call may be, Jace is staying put. Now Jace is focused solely on survival and beating himself up. Not literally of course, but really giving himself a hard time. He insults the clothes he apparently chose to wear, calling the cloak heavy and unsubtle. He wonders to himself how he hoped to survive when his muscles ached from fatigue and misuse. He literally berates himself from being weak, making fun of his pre-mind-wiped self for not hitting the gym more. Yet, there's still some hope. He sees flashes of fire that aren't actually there, figures walking the beach that turn to smoke at his touch. His mind is a living tapestry of the world itself. He discovers his abilities as a mind mage. From here out, Jace runs into a number of illusions from highlights in his past, all of which have not the best things to say about him. These are Jace's true perceptions of himself, his mind telling him what he truly sees in himself through the illusions he makes on the beach. It's kinda sad seeing his friends literally tear into him like this, but they're just illusions after all. They may as well just be a bunch of Jace's screaming at one another. Some of these illusions are pretty telling though, a shadowy figure of Gideon Jorah in particular highlights Jace's feelings of low self-worth, being quite jealous of Gid's confidence and ability to lead. 
Jace was never the leader he pretended to be. Gideon was decisive, tactical, caring, and strong. All Jace did, or at least all he felt that he would do, is sit, think, plan around the situation while Gideon took real action. Jace saw strength, commanding strength, in this illusion of Gideon, while all he saw for himself was a pathetic child playing a pretend leader. Yet the most telling illusion is the one of Liliana Vess. Of course, we know they have a very rocky relationship, but in these raw hallucinations, we see what Jace truly thinks of her. Jace sees her as this evil force, someone who takes everything he cares for and twists or outright kills it. Yet, despite this, he can't stop thinking about her, this violet-haired mystery. Out of all of the things Jace has seen on this speck of land, Liliana was the most telling of his true inner workings. She's the one who sees through his greatest illusion, the facade of confidence. Jace is no scholar, no leader, no detective. He's merely a child playing pretend once again, echoing the thoughts of the Gideon illusion. He wasn't fit to be anyone's pet dog, and yet this woman was apparently the best thing that's ever happened to his life. That's the worst part. Despite all the pain she seemingly put him through, she was still the greatest thing in his existence. That's really sad. So after getting completely owned by his imaginary friends who show him some tough love, Jace decides to take his fate into his own hands. He's gonna command his power, control his mind and these illusions, and finally free himself from this island. He's gonna find help and discover his past. His confidence soars, and he fails. Of course. Jace Castaway style builds himself a little dinghy to get off this tiny island, but the waves prove too much for the handcrafted boat and it shatters. He makes another, gets off the island, only to be stranded on yet another non-inhabited sand dune. You get the point, Jace ain't finding much luck. Again he tries and again the waves batter him like a prize fighter. His ship's in pieces as he clings to the few planks that still manage to float. He lands on a rock formation covered in bird poo, and basically just locks himself away in his mind for a bit. There were answers deep within the fog of his memory, but nothing came clear. His journey would probably end here if it wasn't for the luck of a passing cruiser, a large ship named the Belligerent. The crew hoists him aboard and he hears the strong commanding voice of what must be the captain. She was addressing Jace by name. Valerian, was that his name? He had of course forgotten, but it was apparent that this captain at least recognized him. She appeared, a Gorgon, although Jace wasn't exactly sure why he understood that. He didn't know why, but he knew she was a Gorgon and what a Gorgon was, but still he felt no fear when looking into her eyes. The captain, Vraska was her name, demanded Jace to tell her who he was working for and she would grant him a swift death. But, upon seeing his withered, tattered, sunburnt skin with clothes covered in bird poo, Vraska stopped and wondered aloud, What the hell happened to you, Jace? What? Indeed, Vraska. Honestly, that's not the reaction I saw Vraska having when confronting Jace on Ixalan. Sure, she wanted to kill him at first, but it was like in a fun, piratey way. Yet, after seeing him covered in literal feces, she feels... pity? Not the way I remember the heartless assassin Vraska, but okay, sure. Obviously, they're taking Vraska's character in a whole different direction, something very different from the Gorgon Planeswalker we saw on Ravnica. She's out in the open, leading others, a captain of a ship, cried out loud, but it doesn't seem like murderous intent is her M.O. She's probably still seeking vengeance on Ravnica, and that's probably why she's here on Ixlan, but... We see her character development is really turning in this set. Anyway guys, it's time to give away some sweet MTG booty, and for this Ixalan video, I'll be giving away whatever rare I snag from my pre-release pool. I'll pick either a flavorful card or just the best card and give it away to one of you lucky fans. All you have to do is like, share, subscribe, and of course, comment on this video below. Remember, the winner is going to be announced in a pinned comment on the next Ixalan video. Oh, and if you want to see exactly what I pulled a pre-release, why don't you follow me on social media, Twitter in particular. I'm really 
really bored, guys. So feel free to please DM me at any time. I could really use the company. As always, guys, thank you all so much for watching and making YouTube and Vorthos an amazing community here on YouTube. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and of course, share. As always, I'll see you guys all next time here on the Ether Hub.